If you have an interest in horses and love learning more about horses, the horse industry, teaching, or even managing your own horse business, then you're in the right place. We would love you to join us on our mission, which is to improve the lives of horses around the world through the education of riders, handlers, and trainers. So get comfortable, listen in, and enjoy. Today's chat's been brought to you by International Horse College. International Horse College's motto is people safety and horse welfare. If that's the way you feel about it when you're working with horses, have a look now. Internationalhorsecollege.com, registered training organisation 31352. Now today we've got a guest, Dagmar Klingenbuch, who has come on before. We you know, know a little bit about her and if you haven't heard of Dagmar, I would suggest that you go and have a listen to episode number 570. Dagmar's an animal communicator and we talked about listening to horses. And today she's going to be talking about 10 steps to a deeper connection with your horse. How are you going, Dagmar? Hi, I'm good. Thank you very much for having me again. Oh, thank you for coming on. Thanks for your time. We appreciate it and your knowledge. Dagmar, before we start, you've got 10 steps to a deep connection with your horse. Now, do you see this as, as an area where people just aren't connecting enough with their horse and have a deep enough connection? Is that why you chose this subject or you tell me why you chose the subject? Probably not that they don't have enough, a deep enough connection with their horse, but it's just Sometimes they don't know how to achieve that. So yes. I'd like to talk about it and just mm-hmm. give them some tips how they can achieve that because we want to have an equal relationship with our horses. Yep. And then horses are happy to work with us and do things for us if we understand them and we also give them a choice and a voice. Yes, a choice and a voice. That's a good one. Yeah, yeah. Now, the first one, be present. Tell us about that. I think we're all guilty of it, especially in, in today's world with modern technology. In the old days, we didn't have a phone on us, but now we have a phone on us and we might even, you know, make phone calls as we're riding the horse and uh, we're talking to other people. We are on Facebook and Messenger and we're not actually present with our horses. And it's so important because they feel that we are not there with them. Mm. They feel what we're thinking and, and what we're doing. So if we're not present and enjoying the moment with them, they feel like they're just on the sidelines. They're just left out. So how can they um, connect with us if we're not listening? Yeah, yeah, and I know that it's, you know, it's a bit of a syndrome, I suppose, in the 21st century. It's just, you know, being present with each other. So if we can't be present with each other, it's obvious then that we're not present with the horse. Yes, absolutely. And and I really make a point when I do work my horses that I have my phone on me in case there's an emergency, but I mm-hmm. just turn it on airplane mode or have it on silent and I just keep it in my pocket because I really want to enjoy the time with my horses and I want to make sure that they know that I'm present. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, talk about mindset. What sort of attitude should we have towards our horse? We can often get stuck in this situation that we are – thinking, you know, our horses, they don't do this for us, they don't do that for that for us, and we just have this negative image. And mm-hmm. I always say it's a bit like in a relationship or, you know, married couple, um, they might say, oh, he doesn't buy me flowers anymore, he doesn't do this anymore, yeah. and he doesn't do that anymore. But we don't actually change either, you know. If we change our attitude and we approach them in a positive way, and they will also approach us in a positive way. So we can't be negative about our horses and towards our horses and, you know, think that they bite and they kick and they do this and do that and they're nasty and that they then are nice to us. So we need to be nice to them for them to be nice to us as well. So it's very important that we have this positive attitude towards them. Yeah. Yep. So how are we going to get that positive approach? Tell us a little bit about what we should be doing to have the positive approach so that then we can get a deeper connection with our horse. Again, our animals understand our thoughts because that is what animal communication is. It's a connection from mind to mind. Mm -hmm. So if we have negative thoughts, then they understand our negative thoughts. So we want to have a positive message for our animals. We want to have positive thoughts. And it's even going into, you know, how we say whatever we're thinking is going to become reality. So it goes into the same thing. So we want to have positive thoughts, positive messages, 
And, of course, also reward is very important for our horses, that we can let them know that they are doing a great job for us. And they prefer to work with someone that is positive. And, and even when they make a mistake, that doesn't punish them. And that just lets them know that this is not what we wanted them to do, but is not actually nasty or, or cruel or, or anything like that. So it is very important to have a positive approach towards our horses. All right, all right. Now, how important, I'm thinking from a horse's viewpoint, you know, how important is it then that we do view the whole conversation from the horse's viewpoint as well? Well, it's also important to understand why they react in a certain way, you mm-hmm. know. Yes. We might tie the horse up on in the washing bay and they're totally uncomfortable there and then we get upset with them that they are nervous. But we must realise that they are on their own, away from the other horses, so they're not happy or you know, um, they maybe they were locked up in the stables for 24 hours and we take them out and they're playing up and then we're upset that they are not nice and calm. But we need to consider that they haven't been able to move around for 24 hours. So maybe we can then just go and let them in the dressage arena, let them run around a bit and get rid of some energy. So we do need to understand them and why they react in a certain way because they don't just do it for fun, mm-hmm. but they might be anxious, they might be nervous, they they might have too much energy. And if we can understand what is going on, um, if there's any fear involved or anxiety, then we can help them and we can be more compassionate about it as well and and help them and maybe maybe make different choices. And okay. um, sometimes we might not know why they do certain things, so it's great to then connect through animal communication and ask specific questions. Mm-hmm. You know, why do you do this behavior? And then we can react and we can then um, include that in our training and, and work around it. And Sometimes, you know, if, if we're not comfortable in an area, we're not going to go there. So why do we expect our animals to always just put up with whatever we put them through? So it's nice sometimes to just give them that option as well to let us know that they are not okay. Yeah, yeah. Talk a bit more about how we can be patient, how we can give the horse time when we're with them. You know, a typical thing is um, even with the farrier, when the farrier comes and they want the horse to move over, you see it so many times, and not talking negative about the farrier, but, you know, they might just come in, put their hand on the horse and push them over, Mm. but they didn't actually ask them to move over, you know. They didn't put it in words and say, would you mind moving over, put their hand on their bum and just indicating what we want them to do. So when we ask them to do something, we need to give them time and not rush them so they can actually understand and do what we ask them to do. So that's very important that we can, again, be passionate that they also um, are their own beings and they need that time. I always say, just treat your horses the way you want to be treated as well. So if you have someone that comes along and just grabs you and pulls you around, you're not happy about it either. You want to be asked first. And if we can do that and then give our horses that patience and the time, that's a great approach. Okay. Okay. So if we're going to treat the horse the way that we want to be treated and respect them as an equal being, tell us a bit more about that. Absolutely. Because in the end, horses are just not cars or machines they are animals and they are beings and they've got their own feelings their own thoughts they got dreams just like us as well so we always expect them to fit into our world but they are equal beings so they've got their own ideas they want to be treated as well in a calm way they want to be treated politely and it's great if we can ask them nicely rather than just pushing them around and pulling them around and Positive sentences are very important. So try to ask your horse what you want them to do rather than what you don't want them to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And have a kind voice. But people often think that it's the voice, but it's not just the tone that you're using. They do understand your words. So if you do say nasty things to them in a nice voice, they still understand what you're saying. So um, you do have to be careful how you choose your words because I have that in many occasions. The, my clients, horses or animals, they tell me things and it does come out that um, you know people have given them silly nicknames and things like that. But of course, you know, for, for us it's also not funny if, if you call someone fatty or things like that. It's not nice. Mm. and animals feel the same about it. So if we're negative towards them, it's it's not something nice that you would want to do with other people and animals are the same. They want to be treated as equal beings. 
Okay, okay. So if we want, you know, because you talked before about letting the horse have an opinion, how much of an opinion do they need to have? Well, again, the thing is, if from the old days, it was a bit like, you know, we are the boss and we just yes. boss them around yes. and they have to do what we want them to do and we have to control them. And we thought this is the way to go about to have that, for them to have respect for us. Mm. But the problem with that is that then there's a lot of fear involved. And I'm not saying that we need to let the horses walk in our space and run over top of us. They still need to respect us as much as we respect them as well. But horses come and live with us and they have no choice. So we want them to do things. We want them to work with us, whether they like it or not. So it's really great if we can give them an opinion as well and let them express their feelings as well. And, you know, there's some days where you don't feel like working and there's days where your horse might not feel like working. And Sometimes it's like, okay, well, why don't we just go and do something else and have some fun today? So it's very important that there's a nice balance between what you want and what your horses want. And you will find that if you have this good balance with your horses, that um, you just have a better relationship with them. And we often think that then they are in control, but this is not what it is about. It's really about having an equal relationship Mm-hmm. And the more we do for them, we will find the more they will do for us as okay. well. Okay. Now, what happens if we're not comfortable with something? You know, I mean, how honest do we have to be there? Do we have to um, pretend that we're happy and confident or let them know we're not comfortable? Well, the thing is we can never trick them. You know, again, they are reading our thoughts. They understand our feelings. So yeah. even if you're nervous and you pretend not to be nervous, they're yeah. still going to pick up on your mood not just from your energy, but as well from your thoughts. So if you're not comfortable in a situation, then don't go there because you're transmitting that feeling to your animals, to your horses, and then that's not going to be a good outcome. So it's very important to be honest and you can say to them, look, I'm I'm a bit scared here and talk to them and explain what is happening and um, only do what you're comfortable. We often have a lot of situations where even horses tell me that they, the owners shouldn't be listening to other people mm-hmm. because there's often other people. Um, you know, of course, you've got trainers and other people that help you with, you know, educating your horse. But especially in an adjustment environment, you have a lot of other people that think what is they know what's going on for you and you should do th- doing things different. But in the end, it's you and your horse and you know how you're feeling and you know your horse better than anyone else. So if you're not comfortable, then don't go there and only do what you feel that is is what you're comfortable with. Yes, it's very hard for someone to come in and they've got a new horse and they don't know much and they want to learn a lot. There's always a lot of people out there who are ready to tell them and they give conflicting advice. Exactly, and Mm. they say, oh, you should go for canter, come on, go and canter. But if you're not comfortable to canter, then just go for a walk. Yeah. Because yeah, as yeah. soon as you put yourself in that uncomfortable zone, yes. you will transmit to your horse that you're not not feeling safe, you're not happy, you're worried, yep. and then you don't have a good outcome. So even yes. if other people push you to do things, if you're not comfortable to do it, then don't do it. And okay. be honest about the situation. It's not, no, you don't need to feel bad about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how important is fun then? You know what happens if we just we don't want to train anymore, we just want to have fun? Well, the fun part is very important. Even for horses that are competition horses, we need to give them an opportunity to have fun as well. They mm-hmm. don't want to work seven days a week. We don't want to work seven days a week. And if that is all that we do with them, it just doesn't make it fun. And they think every time they see us, oh, I have to work. But if we can take days where we take them for a walk, we might have a play, do some liberty work, they go like, oh, working with her is actually good fun. And mm, you can okay. even during the training session have a moment where you just do fun stuff. And that is so important to just give them a good balance. Okay. Okay. So it's all, yeah, getting the balance. Now, before we go, Dagmar, I'm just thinking, have you got like a final message about listening to your horse and how to connect with them and give them a voice? What would you say? Well, I guess it's just to combine everything together and just mm. to make sure that you're in the moment that you're observing and also observing your feelings and the feelings of your horse 
if you get stuck, you might want to connect through animal communication where you can ask, which is also very handy if there is any health issues, and just give them a voice because, you know, they might be, might be unhappy about the paddock situation and um, we, we need to know that so we can make life better for them. And it's so important to ask those questions and um, because animals, they just live, you know, horses live in their paddock 23 hours a day. Yes. And um, so whatever is important for them is maybe not important to you. They mm, might talk mm. about the water situation or their paddock friends, but we want to know why we have issues in training and we want to know whether the saddle fits. So we need to ask those questions to get answers to them. Yeah. But it's really to combine everything together and just make sure that we treat them as a full being. Yeah, so there's two things there. I think when we talk about paddocks, we mean like fields and big areas, not little little paddocks or yards. And um, No, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So animal communication is at animalcommunication.com.au. Is that the best place? Yes, exactly. Yes. Okay, and that website will be on your um, page anyway, which will be horsechats.com slash Dagmar Klinger book. I think if you go to horsechats.com, search for Dagmar and um, – at the bottom of her second page it'll be. We'll get that website up so you can contact her direct. Now, I'm thinking, Dave, now that was that was good. It was just a lot of things there to think about, things that we should be thinking about. But I think sometimes if you get on, people might have forgotten, you know, just forgotten to have fun, forgotten to yeah. consider things from the horse's point of view and just even, you know, thinking about the horse as an equal and, not just always feeling that they've got to be in control and boss the horse around and and do things like that. So I think your voice there, you're really speaking on behalf of the horse, you know, thinking about what your horse says, what your horse is thinking. Absolutely. And if we show them respect, we treat them as equal beings, all of a sudden they change as well. They change their attitude and they just become different horses they become soft soft horses and we can just see a change happening yeah and they're just happy to work with us and to be with us because they know that they are very important as well it's not just about us yes yes all right well thanks again Dagmar thank you for coming on and having a chat to us and hopefully we'll catch up with you again soon for some more of your valuable information and knowledge excellent thank you very much for the chat okay thank you thanks bye If you've enjoyed this chat, then please comment, rate and subscribe. If you'd like any changes or recommendations for guests, then please contact us through horsechats.com. And while you're online, have a look at the government accredited courses at internationalhorsecollege.com. Registered Training Organisation 31352. Remember that our comments and instructions are general in nature and do not take into consideration your individual horses, or your individual ability and circumstances. If you enjoyed this podcast, then please leave your comment below.